what's up and welcome back to Interpreting the Stars, where today we're bringing it back to our Saw Marathon with the last one for now, it's Jigsaw. Now, if you've followed my channel since basically the beginning, you'll know that I've already reviewed this movie. This was my intro back then. Hello, David. I want to play a game. As you can see, I have glued your mouth and nose shut, closing out your breathing passages. For years, critics like you have been spreading lies about movies, never giving them the credit they deserve. The game is simple. Rip your mouth open and tell the truth about my movie. Refuse and suffocate to death. The choice is yours. But feelings change when it comes down to movies, you know? I, I think this whole experience as a whole has opened my eyes a little bit on the series, and my scores have changed quite a bit. So I'll be reviewing this one now, and then later on during the weekend, I'll release a ranking video looking at all the Saw movies up to this point, since Spiral isn't even supposed to come out for a year. But it's time to close out these reviews for the series I've been Twitterpated with. Let's get cracking. This review is brought to you by the word of the day, Twitterpated. Infatuated or obsessed. Jigsaw tells the story of yet another Jigsaw trap that shows up 10 years after the serial killer died, leading homicide detectives to believe that possibly... John Kramer faked his own death. The voice on the tapes and the blood under the fingernails of the victims all forensically match John Kramer. But how can it be? The biggest thing about this movie is I think it mostly went back to the basics. Yet it sort of still operates like a bloated Saw film and tries to connect the events of this film to everything before it. But if you're paying attention to the other Saw movies and how Jigsaw acts in those films, you'll notice that John Kramer's ideologies are back and secure in a place you want them to be in Jigsaw. Throughout the series, Saw 1-7, through seven, his ideologies just kept diminishing more and more. Victims were getting less and less intelligent and more forgettable. Jigsaw made traps that made it impossible for everybody to survive, which is what he's all about. If he makes a trap inescapable, then he turns into the murderer that he claimed he never was. Jigsaw brings it back to where I'd say Saw 2 or 3 were found, so it's still Gore City. The twists and turns are still pretty intense. The victims make sense for Jigsaw. The way the film interweaves with the others isn't plot hole centric, but rather much more straightforward and simple. Most importantly, he is allowing his victims the opportunity to save themselves. Everyone in this film has the chance to live. That's good. If I had to pick one Saw movie that this mostly reminds me of, I would say Saw 2 for a variety of reasons. For the group, going through the trap after trap scenario with twisted escape room mechanics, as well as the twist, that was somewhat reminiscent of Saw 2 if you think about it. I'm actually really glad I saw this movie as part of a marathon because Saw 3D was barely a Saw film. It lost a lot of the spirit that the series began with at that point, and visually speaking, it just didn't feel right, it didn't look right. Jigsaw did. Jigsaw brought it back. And there's even some really nicely shot scenes as far as lighting and color palettes go. And especially, especially practical effects. They got rid of practical effects in Saw 3D to have more CGI, but thankfully they brought it back here again. And it is immaculate. Tobin Bell is Jigsaw. I can never get over the fact that his voice is perfect. Now, I have no idea if he will be returning to Spiral or not, but I can't imagine a Saw movie existing without him. He is the voice of Saw. Quite literally. When it comes down to the negatives, I feel like almost everything that I have to say about this, it's biased and it's a gut feeling. That is, even though it feels like Saw, it doesn't at the same time. There's still something missing, almost as if they made the movie because they wanted to, but it shouldn't necessarily be seen as a sequel. It feels more appropriately labeled as a spin-off, maybe a one-off. Yet, because it's connected to the rest of the films, that bugs me. I mean, it takes place 10 years after Jigsaw died and nobody is mentioning Detective Hoffman. Why? We never even saw that character die. It's presumed, sure, but deaths that are presumed almost always come back in the series and explain further. So because it wasn't, I was left wondering why they ignored his existence altogether. I mean, think about it. Hoffman goes missing. Even if he dies, that's not even important because Jigsaw died. That didn't stop the cop from thinking it could be him back from the grave. So even if Hoffman died and all these new traps start getting set up, why wouldn't one cop, one detective, think about Hoffman, the most recently known Jigsaw killer? Why not bring him up at all? 
So I guess there's your main plot hole. The second plot hole, I suppose, would have to deal with the main twist of the film and how it ultimately connects with the rest of the series. And I won't spoil you, just know that something about it definitely bugs me too. So while this is an imperfect Saw film, I do consider it one of the better films overall because it was made well enough and after so many years of the franchise getting worse and worse, it was really refreshing to see a breath of life back in there. Looking at my final score, I can see that in general, this movie was made well and was mostly entertaining regardless on how much it feels like or unlike the existing franchise. That unbiased score is 80% and because it's just a nice refreshing feeling to see the series again and because it brought it back to a familiar place, my bias score is 86%, averaging out the two scores to 83%, 83 out of 100 possible stars, granting Jigsaw with a letter grade of B. Keep an eye out on my channel because soon I'll be releasing a ranking video covering all the Saw films up to this point to figure out which one is the best of the best. And that ranking might surprise you, so make sure that you don't miss out. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified when I come out with that video. Until then, let me know your thoughts on Jigsaw in the comments down below. Did you think that this breathed new life into the series? Did you wish that they made Jigsaw 2 instead of Spiral to continue the story here? Let me know down below and I'll see you on my ranking video. Peace!